Hey guys, for this video, we're going to take a look at this solder five shelf bookcase. This is the cherry finish version. Got to unbox it, get it all put together. I'll show you the step by step of that so you can be confident in how it goes together and that you'll be able to do it yourself. And then we'll also take a look at the finished product to see what we think about it. Now, this one, we got the dimensions right here it's 13 and a quarter front to back, left to right, 35 and a quarter, and then 69 and three quarters tall. So let's get it opened up, see what we have inside. Got these pieces all laid out. I want to give you a quick look at what you're going to see inside the box. We have two pieces here that fold up. That's going to be your backing piece. We have another shelf style piece here. And you'll see everything is labeled. And you're either going to have, like this says G on the side. You'll have a stamp on the side. Or you'll have a sticker, like this shelf here has the D on it. So everything is labeled. This is going to go across the bottom at some point. This is going to go across the top at some point. And... When you see little bars like this with that groove cut out, that's going to be a front facing edge that slides onto something like this right here. So at some point, we're going to be sliding those onto something. Um, there's two boards here. Those are probably sidewalls for it. And then here is another one labeled C. We're going to have three adjustable shelves. Those are labeled J. You can see they have that same groove and there's three covers that will slide over that edge. And then we have two over here labeled E and F. And that rounds out everything, except you'll also get a bag of hardware and the instructions. And look, they got jokes. We're going to start things out just where you should, and that's on step one. So what we're going to do is we're going to get these boards out. A, B, C, D, and F. Okay, you're going to lay them all out on the floor. This is the hidden cam and the cam dowel, which you're going to be inserting. It says you're going to have 12 of these, and they push into the holes on the ends of the board. It's this little metal guy here. You can see the arrow pointing up. That's going to point to the outer edge everywhere that you put it in. That arrow points out, and you're going to sit them in every spot it shows here. And then we're going to put these dowels in, and they look like that. This metal end goes inside that guy have all five boards laid out here. You can see those hidden cams go all along this edge on those four. This finished piece has four of them, one in each corner. And all you're going to do, obviously times 12, line up that arrow with the outside edge. Push it into the hole like so. This metal portion is going to slide through this hole here. Push in like so, and you're done. You're just doing that for each of those spots. Step two. We're attaching A and B to E. So E is a new piece that we haven't used yet. Surface with holes facing down. A and B are the longer pieces that you just put those cams in. So those cams that were still protruding out, or the dowels, are going to go into these holes here, and then you're going to tighten this thing. It says to give it 210 degrees to 190 degree turn. I'll show you, but you'll get a feel for it as you turn uh, when it locks in. So you need a Phillips screwdriver to do that part. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to have the finished edge of E facing up. These edges, I told you, the piece is going to slide over down the road. That's going to face up. And you're going to have two cams to tighten in each corner. Now, I already did these, but I can show you these in the video. I'm going to use the Phillips screwdriver, tighten it, and you'll see it kind of pull in. And here you can see it's not going to go any farther. That's as far as that's going to go, so we know it's locked in. So one more time. Step three, we're going to attach this curved edge piece, which they label as M25, it looks like, across the top. That's three screws. It's the black inch and an eighth pan head screws. Look just like this, and this picture is the same size of the screw, so if you're confused, you can line it up just like so. So there's those three screws. Now, keep in mind, you are screwing this into, you know, particle board. You, you're not a strongman competition right now. You make it too tight and you're going to strip it out and it's not going to hold anything. So it, it doesn't have to be very tight. Just snug it up. The other thing is they want you to put these plugs in right here. Do what you want, but I would wait and do this at the very end because it's possible a scenario comes up where you're going to have to loosen these screws and you're going to have a heck of a time getting these caps off. So I would wait till the very end, but whatever you want to do. Here's what those caps look like that they want you to put in. Obviously there's three of them. So here is that molding with the three screws in it. 
There's pre-drill holes on this piece, so all you're doing is lining them up and then tightening the screws. Again, don't get them too tight. We're just chugging right along onto step number four. Now we're adding these uh, K rods, whatever you want to call them. And they have that notched out. Remember, we not talked about this at the very beginning. Your routered edge is going outside of the cabinet, away from the cabinet. And you're just going to slide those right up the groove. Now, it says they're marked K. I don't see any markings on mine, but they're the longer ones. So you can see that's what it looks like for that side there. I'm going to show you doing this other side. You have the fat groove of this piece here. It's going to go right on there. It is easier with two hands, I'll tell you that. We're just going to slide that guy in there. I'm going to be a little gymnastic-like here, trying to... with one hand. But it just slides up. Until you hit right there, and it covers that whole front edge. Step five, it's time to attach G to the bottom of B and A there. You can see the long finished edge, again, is facing the front. And we're going to attach it with four of these black inch and seven eighths flathead screws. They are going to look like this. They're Phillips. And again, that picture is the same size. If you're confused or not sure, just line it up there. It's a little bit harder to see along this edge, but it does have pre-drilled holes also. So you're still just lining up your screw with that already existing hole and then tightening it down. Again, not too tight. You don't want to strip it out. It won't hold anything then. Snug it up. You're fine. You're going to do that times four. Two on this side, two on that side. That's what it's going to look like all tightened down, and that's our progress so far. Look at the next step. For step six, we're going to attach D. Remember, we used that earlier because we put those little cams and dowels in there. Again, your notched edge is on the top because it's going to have a piece slide up just like we did before. You're going to attach those two dowels and tighten the cams right there. Got D all plugged in. We'll tighten the two cams. For step seven, we're fastening F that had the four cams in it that we played with earlier. And we're going to attach that to the bottom of D with these cams facing downward. Have F all attached. A couple of things to look for. Obviously, you're tightening these two cams to attach it. The unfinished side is going to face downward. Also, you're going to have three holes, one on each side and one in the center. And those have to face up. Step eight is going to have a few things going on here. We're going to attach C with four of those hidden cams. So obviously the cams face the inside. You're going to have two to attach up here, two to attach at the bottom where it attaches to F. Your notch obviously is going to the top. And we're going to be sliding P, which is the little moldings, on each one here. P are the shorter ones. You're going to have two of those. And then left over, you should still have three more of these moldings. And they're going to be for the shelves. You're going to know they're for the shelves because you're going to have three that are all the same size. It's going to be two this size, and they go there. As you can see, we have C attached with the four cams, and I've already slid on the molding for that side. So we're going to put this molding here. Again, we're going to do our best at a one-handed approach here. And there we go. For step nine, we're going to be attaching this bottom molding piece. I say it's labeled M48, but it's pretty unique. You're going to know what piece that is. Now, it attaches with five of these plastic angled brackets. They look like that. Three across the front, and then one on the inside edge of C, one on the inside edge of D right there. And you're going to attach them with these little screws right here. Again, picture matches up. They're Phillips. You're going to attach the angle bracket to the boards here themselves first and then attach the molding to the angled bracket and you want the edge of the bracket even with the front edge of the board so it sits nice and flush. I would leave them just snug enough that the bracket won't move on its own but not so tight that you can't physically move it if you need to and then once everything's on then we tighten it down. You can see I got this first one screwed into the center here, and it's tight enough that it won't flop, but I can move it with my hand. So we're just going to make sure it is straight and flush right there, and that it will stay in position. And we're going to do that at all five spots. 
got that bottom molding on. Now because you're screwing into these angled brackets, there's a little bit of play. And that's why I said to get them all started before you tighten it down. A couple of edges you're going to want to pay attention to is this right here where the molding meets this side piece. If it's too far over, you're going to see a line of that particle board right here when you're looking forward at your piece. Also, this edge right here, if the shelf portion is sticking up, you're going to see that line there. So you want to get it as flush as possible, but if you have to air one way or the other, you'd rather this be a little higher so it covers that seam when you're looking at it. We are on to step 10 and we are attaching O, which is this molding piece right here. Notice the slot cut lengthwise in it. We're going to use three more of those angled brackets that we just used and we're going to need six more of those same screws. There's pre-drilled holes in the bottom of G that we're going to put those screws in. Again, we're going to leave it loose enough that we can move it around just in case we have to. And then when it screws into O, the screws are actually going to go right into that groove. That groove is going to allow the screw to get started, and then we're just going to drive it all the way through until it's nice and tight. Again, not too tight. We're not going to over-tighten things and ruin them. Similar to the last step, you see I have the three angled brackets with the first screws in. This guy's just going to lay right on top here, and then we're going to line it up and tighten the other three have that molding installed and I'll just give you a heads up this is the worst part of building the entire thing it takes a while for those screws to get started in that groove I would still do it by hand just so you don't damage anything but it takes a minute and it's not fun now when you line it up you're going to have a little bit of an overhang lip on this shelf it's more important to be flush right here at these edges so do the best you can with those brackets tighten them down flush little lip here and then the next in instruction is to flip this thing over. We're going to put the back pieces on. Now you're going to roll it this way. You don't want to stand it up because it doesn't have all of its uh, rigidity yet. And you might break something. So very gently, carefully, softly roll. For step 11, we're going to attach the back pieces that are all folded up. There's two of them, a larger one for the top, a smaller one that we'll get to in a second on the bottom. So for the larger one, the unfinished surface is facing out. The finished surface is facing inside of your uh, bookshelf. There's a little perforated hole right up here. Make sure that's at the top. And we're going to be putting nails around three sides. You do not do this bottom side. You are going around the perimeter here, not doing the bottom side. And you're using a bunch of these little nails there, so you're going to need a hammer. They give you this little nail holder guy, so the nails slide into that little hole right there, and this thing pinches them so it can hold it, and then you get your spacing by that little notch cutout. So on the board, you're going to push this until that notch is up against the edge, and that sets how far in you want the nail to be. So you definitely want to use this so you don't blow it out the side or damage your bookshelf. Now for the spacing of the nails, you want to be an inch and a half away from any corner and you want to be a half inch away from the fold seams that are right here and right here otherwise your spacing is going to be five and a half inches per nail so let's say for instance you start down here in this corner you're going to come up an inch and a half and you're going to put a nail then you're going to go five and a half inches you're going to put a nail five and a half five and a half five and a half and then for the last one just make sure you're still an inch and a half away from the corner now we'll see how the nails finish out here but it looks like we're going to be putting a nail on either side of the seam keeping our nails a half inch away from this, uh, the seam itself Top piece is all nailed down. Again, you're keeping this bottom edge here open, no nails. The other piece that comes right here at the bottom is going to overlap it. So that's why we're not putting anything there right now. And you can see we got the nails all spaced out here, going all around the perimeter on three sides. And we're moving on to the next step. Step 12, we have the last folded up piece that's going to go on the back. Again, we're putting our nails around the outer perimeter. This seam here is going to overlap, and then we're going to use that little nub, or whatever you want to call it, the bead as they call it, along this overlapped edge, and that's what's going to hold our nails and get them in place. So I'll show you that in a second, but let's get these other ones in first. Got the perimeter nails in this bottom piece, you can see them going right here. So we're going to work on the part that overlaps, and we're going to do the same spacing, so an inch and a half here, and then five and a half inches all the way down with... 
our half inch on either side of the seam here. Now we're using the nail holder a little differently. He had that bead edge we talked about, this little, little guy right there. And he's going to go right on this edge as we hold the nail. And you can see this edge is more or less lined up with the edge right here. So that's going to give your spacing to put you in the middle of this board so you don't blow out the top or the bottom. So you're just going to do it the right way and hold it like that with that edge down. If you can see that. And every five and a half. Looking pretty good. Time to stand her up, throw in some shelves. For step 13, we're putting our front moldings on the shelves, and then we have to put the shelves in. It's going to be your last three pieces. You have three shelves that look like this, three moldings, and they're going to slide down that groove. When you put it on, you want this edge of the molding and the shelf to be flush. So just flip it around whatever way it gets you to that point. And then you're just going to slide it down, and you want to kind of center it, because the molding's not as long as the shelf. So leave yourself a little bit of a gap on either end, and you'll see why in two seconds. Of course, the shelves are adjustable, so you're gonna put those pins in wherever you want the shelf, and then we're gonna throw the shelf on top. One shelf down, two to go, and you'll see why the molding doesn't go all the way to the edge because it butts into this molding piece here, and yet the shelf goes all the way to the edge. So that's why you're going to center them up when you put them in. Two more. There it is all put together with all the shelves on. That's just a little bit of styrofoam still stuck to it. Now, the next step talks about screwing this bracket into the back of it and then screwing it to a 2x4 in your wall to hold this thing from tipping over. I don't do that part, but you're more than welcome to. If you remember, we skipped putting these plastic pieces in, but since everything went well, we're going to go ahead and put those three in. And then you get these little covers that go over all of those hidden cams. If you remember those little things, we gave a three-quarter turn with the screwdriver. So we're going to plug all of those also now. Now I got those three plugs in along there. We're doing these cam covers. You can see that one and that one installed. They're kind of fun to put in, and by fun I mean not fun. You see they have this little tab sticking out at the bottom, or at the top, and it goes right through the center of the cam there. You're going to want a hammer to tap those in, because just pushing them with your fingers is not going to work out so well. Take a quick look at our finished product now that I got all the styrofoam off of it. Yeah, it looks pretty snazzy. Can't get the whole thing in the picture, but there it is, your solder bookshelf. Thanks for watching.